Hello, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today we're going to be looking at M-Tracker 3D in Final Cut Pro 10. We're going to be tracking this drone clip that you see here in my timeline, and we're going to add a bit of 3D text and add some reflection with the M-Tracker 3D titles. When working with M-Tracker 3D, you first work with M-Tracker 3D as an effect, as you can see here. And the second step is you work with M-Tracker 3D as a title, which is found in your titles browser under M-Tracker 3D. First step, we're going to add M-Tracker 3D as an effect onto our clip that we'd like to track. Notice you're presented with an on-screen control button, one button that says track. You also have that button in your inspector. Both do the same thing, it is simply one button to begin tracking your footage. So you can see now that we're done tracking, so we need to copy our tracking data and paste it into the M-Tracker 3D titles that we have available. So let's go and copy our track. And now that we've copied our track, we can go into our M-Tracker 3D titles and we can pick what we want to use. M-Tracker 3D will come with a variety of different USDZ models, titles, pointers, particles, drop zones, etc. And more are available from MotionVFX.com. So why don't we look in our captions section and let's pick out a 3D title. Why don't we use title number three in our 3D titles? Let's drag it on top of our clip. And of course you'll want to make sure that your title is the same duration as the clip that we just tracked. We can see here that no tracking data is available. We'll want to copy it and then paste it from our M-Tracker 3D effect. Simply go to paste track to apply that tracking data. Okay, and we can see here that our tracking data has saved successfully, so click okay. Next, we'll want to pick the position on our screen to place our 3D text. Go to your target icon, and once you've selected it, you now see that you have a 3D gizmo where you're able to place your item on the screen. I'd really like my text to be over the water so that we can play with our reflections, so why don't we put our text right here. Of course, now we'll want to go in and adjust our contents scale, position, and rotation in our inspector. If you decide that you'd like a new position, that's no issue. Simply go to your target icon, place your 3D gizmo, and select the new position on the screen. Of course then, you may want to reset all of your parameters and adjust your scale and rotation again to better suit your new position. I really like this, but I can see that the trees are in the way of my text here. There's a couple different options. We could mask out the trees, to make it appear as though the text is behind them, or we can simply rotate our text so that we can place it more along that right side of the river. Why don't we try that? I think I'm gonna scale my text up a bit as well. I'm going to continue tweaking my content's position, rotation, and scale so that I can place my text right along this side of the river. Now that we've made some of those adjustments, we need to reposition our light. No issues, just go back into our light rotation parameters in our inspector to make those adjustments. You can also make adjustments to your lighting style here in your inspector. I really like the way this looks, but I noticed that my title depth is a little bit too deep at this angle, so why don't we bring our title depth down just a bit. One final adjustment I'd like to make is I noticed that my text and my reflection aren't quite meeting. Now we could adjust this in one of two ways. We could come into our title text position and adjust our Y position and make it appear as though our text is floating above the water 
and we see the reflection beneath. I'd really like to keep my text on the water though, so we're just gonna bring that Y position down until our text meets perfectly on the reflection on the water. I really like the way this looks. I notice as I scrub through my timeline, we have a small tree right here that comes behind our reflection. And of course, naturally, this tree would come in front of our reflection. So we're gonna do a quick draw mask and go ahead and keyframe the position of that mask so that we can make it look as though our tree is passing in front of our reflection. To do this, hold Option, click and drag up to duplicate our clip. This clip no longer needs M-Tracker 3D, so let's go ahead and delete that. Then we're gonna make sure that that clip is above our title. Let's go ahead and trim our clip until it gets to the position where the tree begins to pass in front of the text. Now in our effects, let's find masks. Let's apply a draw mask. Let's click to add some control points around our tree. Let's go in our inspector to our control points and set keyframes for those. Now let's scrub through until the moment the tree has passed in front of our text. Right there. We're gonna highlight our control points and bring those down again above our tree. Now let's scroll back. Let's change the position again. It's looking really good. Why don't we work with our feather a bit so that we can soften that side up. I'm going to scale my canvas up just a bit so we can really fine tune where this is. Okay, once again, this has been George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Thank you for checking out our M-Tracker 3D tutorial on tracking 3D text with reflections in Final Cut Pro 10.